Welcome to Ability Awakens, a podcast about provocative insights in the arts of therapy, behavior, and spirituality as meaning making. And it's blast off. Here we are again. Hi, how are you going? Good, really good, Dr. Bowers. Joseph, here we are, just relaxing into the space. We've been talking about being grounded today. And grounding. And giving us an insight to thinking about, oh, while we've been talking, we should do a podcast. So we've Um, jumped up off the ground and we've come inside. Literally, we've been laying under the gum tree in the garden, talking about grounding while we're grounding. In Ayurveda... We, they actually explain to walk barefooted upon the earth. Cool. What's that all about? When we think about the earth and the five elements that it's made up of, we think about ether or space, air, we think about fire, we think about water, and we think about earth. And we're made up of the same elements of the earth. Earth, air, water, and fire, and ether talking about being grounded and just thinking about the older ancient principles I think our past generations understood it much better than we did and even when we reflect on growing up when there wasn't so much technology around people would get outside and they literally play in the mud isn't it interesting that we're drawn to that process of playing in the mud I don't know maybe in this day and age there's a lot of people that haven't experienced that continual process of playing in the mud when they're a child, feeling connected to the earth and making mud pies and playing with a friend or a sibling. Just that tactile experience, feeling connected to a bigger picture, a greater presence. Today we have to have scientific studies that back all this up. It's weird to say that they actually do exist. There's a quite a robust literature now that is supporting the idea of the electromagnetism that's involved in having bare feet and being on the ground because we've all been so disconnected. Part of the realization in the health and science literature now is that it uh, promotes inflammation, chronic inflammation in all, all the different areas of the body which uh, is being discussed, but it's still there out in the left field, unfortunately. A lot of people aren't even aware of this, but for me, grounding has always been about embodied felt sense of just being down to earth, of being connected to earth-based spiritualities that have always brought me back to myself, I think, to a sense of calm and peace and centeredness and mindfulness. Every time I think about like just going outside being grounded, and we just do it automatically. We, we even say to each other, I'm just going to go outside and I'm just going to sit out here and have a cuppa or whatever it may be. It brings me back to um, the basics of my grandfather's teaching. And um, I think the amazing part for my grandfather, he chose to, or his gift was water divining. Divining was um, where he'd take his shoes off and um, he'd have like a forked, Um, stick that came off a tree he had this pretty much down pat people from properties around his hometown would ask him to come and do the divining work to locate water and they then would put down shafts to create a well when we think about grounding what the modern day person tells us grounding is really being barefooted being in touch with the earth, being in touch with those five elements that we spoke about. And my grandfather did it by the bucketful. He was a gardener and he was a water diviner. Didn't you tell me earlier that he always wore shoes that were leather footed? Yes, my grandfather, when he brought a shoe, it always had a leather sole. So the leather sole was mimicking our own skin. Right. So it was touching his skin and the shoe was touching the earth. So even in colder weather where he grew up, it was quite cold when he was growing up. So 
he was very, very in tune with that process naturally, and I could see that growing up. And my grandfather was around until I was 13, but made an incredible impact on my psyche. All the moccasins I've ever seen, and my own moccasins over the years, have always been leather-footed. It's interesting how our ancestors were just in tune, naturally, and most likely aware, but also had that knowledge but didn't speak it. That's very true. I think a lot of these things were assumed and just part of the culture. When things are at that level, people don't necessarily even have to talk about it. It's, these things are not usually talked about until it becomes an issue, which is, you know, the way life kind of goes, isn't it? I can remember my parents and maybe also my grandparents always said, go on, let's get, go outside, let's... So it was always either going into the garden and... Um, my grandfather pulling out a carrot from the garden and he just wiped the soil off it and he goes, no need to wash it, just get it into you. And that was really exciting. It gave me a profound insight of he grew his vegetables um, organically. He so was so in touch like with everything that we did. Like um, He'd take us out to the rivers and the creeks and we'd go swimming, we'd be barefoot constantly. Um, we were so connected and as a child I don't even remember hardly ever being to a doctor. We live in regional Australia up in the mountains this, um, and uh, a lot of our clients though that we talk to across Australia are living in the built environment. What do you say to somebody who can't do that, who can't get out into the bush and and you know get their fingers dirty because they're living in a apartment or a house where they've really got no space no garden per se take the opportunity walk outside find a park take your shoes off what about kids in school and you got a background in teaching and also with your support of kids with special needs what would you do there in this day and age i think there's such an emphasis on safety and doing the right thing I remember when I was going to school that like when we actually had to do a three-legged race or we had to do a marathon we took our shoes off because a lot of us couldn't afford joggers and we'd just take our school shoe off or our sandal off and we'd go barefooted naturally you run better and you connect it to the ground and it was safe in this day and age, I think people are concerned about other things that are in our environments that are tossed there by people, whatever that may be. It's about scanning the environment and seeing and being aware of, like, is it safe? Let's take our boots off. Even if it's not, just take your shoes off, sit on the ground. If it, we're just sitting with our hands attached to the ground, we're still doing the same process is grounding, being barefooted, be barehanded, and touching the earth, feeling those five elements that are in us and also in the earth. Honestly, part of the struggle I feel right now, Duane, is that I don't really necessarily feel very grounded. I feel tired and we've been working really hard lately and a lot of projects on the go and um, I think one has to have a bit of realism and that we can learn just as much by the ways that we, you know, sit on the earth and have times to relax and to regenerate as well as the times when we're pretty exhausted and um, just pumping it, so to speak. And I think that's, that's all kind of a teaching. I think that brings a realization to all people where they become so focused on what they're doing and the process of work and they get up, they do the same thing, they get dressed, go to work, get home, have the showers and they do the same routine without thinking about it and when they become exhausted they think about getting away and it's like to the beach or to nature or wherever that may be. I wonder what that draw card is on a deeper level where they're thinking, okay, I need to reconnect, I need to feel space, I need to feel relaxation. And I think that's a bigger call of um, trying to get your boots off, 
trying to get out of the what we feel is a mundaneness in life for a lot of people because it's a continual pattern and you hear that in the cities where people just want to escape to to get going to the beach or somewhere that's nature reserve something totally different to what the built environment is to reconnect the equivalent in um, in our psyche I suppose if we can't do that physically is mindfulness and meditation and centering in the breath and the body and just bringing the self back to that sense of attending to our breath and allowing that breath to slow down and becoming mindful of our thoughts that come and go and allowing that to happen like the clouds that come and go in the sky and this the sense that um, there's a part of us that is like the sky that is always there and the clouds, the storms, the stormy weather, the rain, the thunderstorms will come and go and fill the sky but the sky is always there, it's always basically the same, the same environment, the same calmness that holds the clouds, that holds the weather, that holds our thoughts and our higher self is aware of that we can observe that happening and finding that place of the higher self enables us to inwardly I suppose do what we're talking about physically that grounding being barefoot walking is also in that sense a Buddhist meditation but it's also deeply Christian in our Western Christian mystical traditions Saint Francis of Assisi was known to be a barefoot walker as was Claire of Assisi and the poor Claire's they weren't known for having shoes at all lived most of their lives without shoes uh, they would attend the mass you know the most sacred event uh, in the church barefoot and nobody um, nobody batted an eyelash at that at the time because they realized that those those individuals were walking on sacred ground because they were living a sacred way of life they were making the ground itself sacred just by being and by being open to that spiritual awareness of life it's more about finding that space even if we're sitting on a park bench and we choose just to take our shoes off for a moment and just sit feeling connected closing our eyes sitting on a bench letting those thoughts come and go as that's a meditation in itself we don't have to leave anywhere we just have to become more present to where we are and finding those spaces where we can connect we are ability awakens podcast a provocative, insightful show about the arts of therapy, behavior, and spirituality as meaning-making. Thank you for welcoming us in and for listening and being with us today.